So about a year ago, I made a video covering the strength of Yamamoto, but that actually got taken down from YouTube. And I've been just a little apprehensive to try to make the video again because like it got taken down from YouTube and my channel got a strike, but it's been a little over a year. So I think we can go back into doing this topic again. Plus there's a lot of people that still downplay Yamamoto. They don't give the old man the credit he deserves. So I figured I could come in, kind of set the record straight, tell you guys how powerful Yamamoto is and you know, all that good jazz. But before we begin, if this is the kind of content you enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It shows me that this is the kind of content that you enjoy and it really helps the channel out. If you want to take that extra step, you can become a channel member, which gives you perks in the Discord chat, as well as giving you access to all of my past debates that I have uploaded and debates I will upload in the future, as well as the ability to view past live streams. But with all that being said, you guys know how I generally do these character videos. We're going to go through all of the different arcs, kind of talk about some of the things Yamamoto has done, then go ahead and put some numbers to said feats. So starting off in the Soul Society arc, Yamamoto is pretty much unrivaled in his power in the Soul Society arc. Even though he really doesn't do a whole lot, I mean, some of the basic things that he's done is demonstrate his Shikai, which was said to be a transcendent power, which take that for how you will. I mean, if you want to say that like, oh, his Shikai was transcendent just like Don Gaichigo and Aizen, I mean, I'm not essentially saying that, but it is still a powerful statement for his Zanpakuto nonetheless, and does go with the theme of Ryujin Jaka being the most powerful Zanpakuto. He also fondles Shunsui and Jushiro, like the two of them are trying to avoid fighting Yamamoto at all costs. Keep in mind, this is the same Shunsui and Jushiro that Yamamoto held in the regard as being peerless Shinigami, as they are also some of the oldest Shinigami to be around in the Gotei 13 currently, and they were the first graduates of Yamamoto school. And even then, they can't do anything to really put up a fight against him. Even the now is like, oh, two captains, that was very foolish of me. There's like literally nobody that can actually stand up to this man Yamamoto and the only character in the Soul Society arc that really comes to mind that would be able to put up somewhat of a fight against Yamamoto would be Aizen as Aizen has demonstrated that he is far above captains as well we actually do learn that he is at least twice as strong as a captain at this point with him being able to one-shot both Bankai Toshiro Bankai Ichigo and Bankai Saji. So all of these captain tier characters with their Bankai are nothing compared to this Aizen just in his base alone. Although I guess he does use some Kido and he does use Kyoka Suigetsu, but you still get what I mean. Although even this I wouldn't say is quite good enough to put Aizen on Yamamoto's level in this arc as Yamamoto again is being stated that like it doesn't matter how many captains we throw at this guy, he's just gonna stomp them all into the dirt. Whereas Aizen is just demonstrating that in a one-on-one -on -one fight against some captains, he's definitely definitely good enough to just thrash them in a one-on-one. -on -one. However, Yoroichi and Soifun are able to apprehend him, and whether or not Aizen himself thought he was in a precarious situation, the Menos Grande viewed him to be in a compromising position and thus used the Nagasion to pull him out of the Soul Society, which is something Yamamoto actually himself states is only used when allies of the Menos are actually in danger. So whether Aizen would admit it or not, he was actually in danger on Sokyoku Hill. Now we then fast forward to the fake Karakura Town arc where Yamamoto actually confronts Aizen and Aizen does say, yeah, in a head-on battle, you would beat me. Your Zanpakuto truly is the strongest. Although there's clearly not that much of a gap between Yamamoto and Aizen, if Aizen can still affect Yamamoto with Kyoka Suigetsu, we do get a confirmation in the Can't For Your Own World novel that you can completely suppress Kyoka Suigetsu if your Ryatsu is high enough. So the fact that Yamamoto is a little wary of Kyoka Suigetsu does show that he's still in the same ballpark as Aizen. And the fact that Yamamoto did go ahead and prep a technique against Aizen does show that he's a little wary of him, right? And the fact that Aizen could kill him or harm him is a reality that he's trying to prevent, right? But it's still rather impressive because this is just base Yamamoto kind of swinging around, right? He's not really doing anything super intense. And he's matching up to Aizen, or Aizen is, you know, giving him credit, saying like, yeah, you'd probably just beat me in a one-on-one -on -one straight up, you know, slug fight. And Aizen's the same guy that's stronger than all of the Espada combined, basically soloed the entirety of the Gotei 13, was fondling Ichigo with his holification. Like it's, he's a pretty impressive guy. And yet he's still like, oh, I don't know if I could beat Yamamoto. And if anything, 
Yamamoto's prep can be argued that it was more for Kyoka Suigetsu, whereas Aizen's prep with Wonderwise was to contain Yamamoto's power. So Yamamoto was less afraid of Aizen's, you know, actual raw strength per se, and more afraid of like Aizen just being this weasel that he wouldn't be able to hit, or he wanted to guarantee that he got a kill in on Aizen. He wanted to just ensure that Aizen was not going to come back, that he was going to die. Then we finally move into the Thousand Year Blood War arc, where unfortunately Yamamoto doesn't get to do a whole lot. He fights the false Yuha, who granted, did, you know, choke hold Kenpachi in the air and treated him like a baby, and Yamamoto just beats him up. It is arguable that some people say that, well, did Yamamoto, like, expend a lot of his energy fighting that false Yuha? I would argue that Yamamoto going through his Bankai just drains a lot of stamina from him like it's very intensive for him to use his bankai considering also that his bankai has four main named techniques and they all seem pretty stamina intensive to me with him raising like trillions of people from the dead and making sun armor that's affecting the entirety of the soul society it just seems like it would be a little stamina intensive so i can understand if it's like well it wasn't necessarily that roid himself is what tired yamamoto out but using his bankai does tire him out it takes a lot of energy to use but regardless we get two very powerful statements for yamamoto the first comes from the data book where it says even with one arm which does say that yamamoto got weakened with you know the loss of one of his arms but even with on one arm he's still the strongest shinigami of all the gote 13 and yuha himself says who else but me could control your like overwhelming power meaning that yuha is saying that none of the other stern ritter are capable of containing Yamamoto's Bankai because it is just too powerful. This includes people like Gremi, who is stated to be the strongest Stern Ritter, and the data book statement would actually imply that Yamamoto would still be relevant even at the very end of the series because you have people like Shunsui who do not train, he did not get any power buffs, but yet he's still able to fight toe to toe with Lile Baro post Ash Wallen. And the data book saying that at the beginning of the arc, Yamamoto is still stronger than Shunsui does mean that Yamamoto would be able to do the same thing, right? And even in Camp for Your Own World, Shunsui does hold Yamamoto in wide regard and actually seems to think that he hasn't surpassed Yamamoto, right? In fact, one of the main plot points of the Thousand Year Blood War was trying to raise their overall battle power because Yamamoto pretty much hard carries the Gote 13 in terms of their strength. If you lose Yamamoto, you lose a majority of your fighting power, very similar to like Squad Zero losing Ichibe would neg a lot of their fighting potential. It's the same thing. So that's actually like a main point for Shinsui why Unahana and Kenpachi go and do their little fight because he's like, dude, we gotta like replace this power vacuum that Yamamoto has left. Now to put some numbers to that and to just talk about how strong and like how fast Yamamoto would be in say a versus debate or something, his Bankai has one of the most blatant feats in the entire series with him being able to threaten the entirety of the Soul Society just by merely existing. The Soul Society is a realm that we know mirrors the human realm, but also contains a star, meaning the realm itself would have to be at least solar system in size to not only contain said star, but also contain the space between the star and other celestial bodies so they do not just burn up on impact. We also know from Kaname's statements, you know, with his friend, that there are dozens of stars in inside of the soul society as well and we actually see them up in the night sky as well when kaname is talking to his friend in the manga meaning that at the bare minimum yamamoto would be multi-solar system in terms of his power however if yuha's statement about none of the other stern Ritter being able to contain his power is true that actually means yamamoto at least with his bankai would be stronger than gremi who's able to create pocket dimensions that are able to contain numerous galaxies and nebulas, meaning Yamamoto would actually go up to low multi-galaxy in terms of his power. After that, it gets a little iffy about scaling him to other things, right? Because we don't exactly know the full max size of the Soul Society. For instance, we know that like the Valley of Screams are infinite, but we don't know if the Valley of Screams are larger than the Soul Society. This might sound absurd to some people because the Valley of Screams are drawn to be smaller than the Soul Society, but it's also possible this is not drawn to scale. So if you want to argue that the Valley of Screams are just smaller than Soul Society, right? They are maybe drawn to scale, then obviously the Soul Society itself would be infinite in size or larger than an infinite realm. And that would bump up Yamamoto's power to being infinite as well. We didn't really see him affect Mukin all that much when he used his Bankai, but if destroying the Soul Society also affects Mukin, which is a cutoff realm, but if it does for whatever reason affect it, then Yamamoto could have infinite power in that way as well. 
or if we ever get like direct confirmation that the Soul Society and Hui Kumunda are somewhat relative in terms of their size, that would also be a direct confirmation that the Soul Society is infinite in size as well. But that would really be where Yamamoto would cap off, because he's not going to scale to like God Yuha or the Soul King being able to destroy the multiverse. And while I think it's possible to maybe do some weird argument to scale him back above, true Shikai Ichigo, I would say at best that is debatable, right? Because you could try to argue that Yamamoto is stronger than true Shikai Ichigo to then give Yamamoto access to the like higher dimensional statements that Aizen says, right? Where Aizen would basically be saying that Mugetsu Ichigo is 5D, but that goes against the narrative of Aizen surpassing all Shinigami and Hollows at that point in the series and then Ichigo surpassing him. But I suppose you could also argue that Aizen doesn't necessarily know about Yamamoto's Bankai. Maybe he doesn't know about his new updated power as Yamamoto does mock Yuha for trying to tell him that his Bankai is weaker for whatever reason he's like no obviously I've been training and honing my power and when the real Yuha comes in he's more or less being like why are you being weird Yamamoto why are you not letting people heal your arm right like why are you just being stubborn right and Yamamoto is also being referenced as like not being as savage as he used to be like back in the day he used to just literally be a murderer running around the soul society just cutting people down and Yuha's like why are you not being that same savage like you were like thousands of years ago but that's really it for AP or the strength of Yamamoto's speed as I'll always say is very odd in Bleach because they should definitely be in the FTL ranges it really just depends on where you're going to make the argument for them being like super super fast right because there's nice little feats here and there throughout the series like ichigo reacting to a sero or shuhei dodging the nagasi on light you have like gin and toshiro's fight where toshiro dodges gin's sword like point blank and that's like a really nice like two times the speed of light feat you have like nice little things here and there then you have some even better feats right where stark and shunsui are fighting and stark shooting like a whole bunch of these like saros that are light speed attacks and shunsui is able to dodge around them and it comes out to being like 77 times the speed of light but then the really big big boy feats are like full hollow ichigo and ukiora being like hundreds of thousands of times the speed of light if you're going to stack their forms on top of each other and say that they keep getting faster like by tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of times right you can get them to being like a few hundred thousand times the speed of light and obviously they're both inferior to aizen and yamamoto themselves especially Especially end of series Yamamoto or thousand year blood war Bankai Yamamoto so you have that and then obviously if the Stern Raider are inferior to Yamamoto but they're able to react to the Ash Walden light which is traveling at millions of times the speed of light then obviously that buffs Yamamoto's speed as well so it really just kind of argues where you're going to argue the big boy speed feats come from in Bleach that's kind of where that comes down to as for Yamamoto's hacks or his abilities he's very proficient in keto being able to use something like ito kaso without any incantation which is a keto in the 90s although it didn't really do any damage to aizen probably because yamamoto was very weakened from having tanked his own condensed shikai attack that was meant to actually kill aizen right so it's pretty impressive for yamamoto but his keto proficiency is quite good he was able to shatter wonderwise with the double bone technique the double fisting technique if you will which is able to kill wonderwise past his regeneration generation which is pretty good it's possible that either the attack is so strong that it just kills you past your regeneration or it possibly even negates regeneration when it hits you right either way it's still a very very useful technique for Yamamoto to have then we have his Zanpakuto, which in its Shikai state is basically just big fire, right? But it does at least have the ability to seal people away as he does to Aizen, Gin, and Konami at the beginning of Fate Karakura. And I guess it also somewhat shows the same ability in the Zanpakuto arc if you want to use that filler. But then when we get into his Bankai, basically Yamamoto has like two just one-shot techniques, right? He has the ability to raise just trillions of people from the dead, which I think is a very powerful ability because you can essentially just use that to stall out your opponent's stamina. Because even if you were to fight like a trillion ants, I don't think people understand how many that is, right? But if you had to step on each ant individually, you're eventually gonna run out of stamina, right? If you gotta stomp your foot down a trillion times, you're gonna run out of stamina and die eventually, right? Even if you're stepping on a thousand ants at a time, you're still gonna have to step like what, a couple million times to stomp out a trillion ants. It's the same concept here. But even better because these aren't just random schmucks. Some of these are like stern ridders that Yamamoto killed in the past. And others are like random Shinigami that he killed when he was like a wandering murderer, right? In the Soul Society. 
So I think this is actually one of his better abilities. It's essentially like, hey, I can summon a trillion dead people to come fight for me. It's just like the amount of sheer numbers that it is is absolutely staggering. And then there's obviously his like very well-known armor of the sun, which isn't particularly super great, right? Because, you know, if anybody knows, it's like, well, the sun doesn't really output that much energy. I think the best I've seen people argue for like the sun's like max output or something like that is that like it could output enough energy to be like multi-continental or something like that. But that's like the sun acting as a reactor and obviously Yamamoto's not using the sun in that way he's just cloaking himself in it but it is nice because a lot of characters don't have that level of heat resistance right so it is possible that Yamamoto just exists somewhere and just fries somebody just by being next to them it is also nice for characters in Bleach by the way that like some of these like Hasfold or the false Yuha are able to just be anywhere near Yuha or Yamamoto with his sun armor but outside of that we just get the standard Shinigami and like Bleach abilities where it's like oh Yamamoto's a soul so he's invisible to normal people without astral awareness or he can attack you at a soul level which are good abilities mind you but they're just like basic abilities in Bleach but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below do you think Yamamoto is like this top five Five, like strongest character in the series or do you think he's like top 20 because that's where people generally put Yamamoto they either think of him very highly because of like the two very nice statements that we have for him and they put him in like the top five or they're just like nah those statements aren't very good or you know they can use some other scaling to be like ah he's more like just top 20 based on his feats and everything right especially if you really lean on him getting tired or maybe trying to scale him more relatively to like the fake Yuha, then you can definitely like lower him down to top 20. I'd be curious to see where we have Yamamoto with all of the information that I've provided in this video. Leave a like and subscribe. It shows me that you guys enjoy this type of content. Again, if you want to take that extra mile, go ahead and become a channel member. You know, just if you do become a channel member, please join the Discord to make sure you get the max use of all of your perks. Let me know that you became a channel member because otherwise, like, I'm not going to see everybody that joins, right? And then obviously people that have, like, a YouTube name is probably going to be different than their Discord discord name so just like let me know so you make sure you get all your stuff right if you pay to become a channel member i want to make sure you get all of your perks right so just let me know i'm not gonna bite you or anything like just tell me that you became a member and we'll like get it all sorted out all right but with all that being said peep any other links that are down in the description with all that being said let's actually just wrap this up and get out of here you guys have yourselves a nice day have a nice week and i'm gone Peace late, guys.